Hello, my name is Matthew, and I just finished reading Demons by Dostoevsky. It's translated by Richard Peaver and Larissa Volonkonsky. This is the copy that I have. And uh, for me, this is probably the most difficult Dostoevsky novel to, to penetrate. Um, it's not easily identifiable what the plot is. It's not very clear who the main character is, or if there is a main character or a villain. Instead, it is a panoramic novel of Russian life uh, with an ensemble cast. And it's a book of ideas and discussions, these long conversations that all of these characters have with each other. And the, the best way I can describe the novel is one of the characters is talking in the book, talking about writing a novel about Russian life and the character says that the novel is going to contain um, everything about Russia in a given year but it's not going to have who was the head of state or which politicians were elected or which companies were doing well or anything like that instead this novel that's going to be written is going to contain the general temperament and attitudes of regular Russian life in a given year. And I feel like that's what this book is. Um, the conversations feel dangerous. They have these scary ideas and um, frightful intentions. Um, one, one of the subplots of the book is having a revolution, and they talk about t uh, taking over the government, starting, uh, starting anew and having an ideal state. But unlike the idea of um, the government is corrupt and we need to go in and fix it, instead it's that the government is not corrupt enough and we can exploit and take advantage of the general public more. We can, and it talks about ideas and how um, ideas can be malleable and you can change uh, the general opinion of the public and you can make them distrust their opinion and be ashamed of their own opinion and only believe the opinion that is given to them by the government. It has, it has conversations like that. It refers to the public as scum at some points. And the, the conversation um, leads the plot forward. The, the, the ideas as they evolve um, is, is the main interest and focus of, of the book. It's these dangerous ideas. And they, they talk about um, r religion, atheism, God, and godlessness, um, and murder and suicide, the virtues of su suicide, the benefits of it. Um, and these are scary people. You wouldn't want to meet any of them. They, they feel intimidating. And there's a general atmosphere. Uh, as I was reading this, it feels like all of these conversations are ha happening at nighttime by candlelight with stark shadows cast like chiaroscuro paintings. Um, it's a it's a book that's hard to follow because it's a book of secrets. Um, they're keeping things from one another. The, the characters are liars and drunks. You can't believe the words that they're saying, even though they can be persuasive and convincing. They have secret meetings, midnight rendezvous, there's secret societies, and it's not just talking, but these are heated uh, debates. So. People are slapping one another. People are grabbing, um, a character grabs another character by the nose and drags them across the room physically. Uh, people get offended and have duels. There's a, a great duel scene. Um, as the book goes along and <clears throat> this madness, these ideas start running out of control and there's a, a, a hysteria, a deliriousness starts brewing and these ideas 
basically spill out into the streets. There's uh, a big party that, that goes terribly wrong. At one point, a town is set on fire and it's described the, 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 the visual of seeing a town that's on fire during the daytime. And what it's like to see the sun go down and the town is still burning at night. This nightmarish, horrifying vision. It's um, <clears throat> impressive to read and it gets exciting. All of a, su all of a sudden, this, this conversation just um, becomes much more um, engaging than it, it, it kind of tricks you, it sweeps you in. Um, because for so much of the novel, you you might have a very hard time understanding what's going on, what's the point of it, where are we going, th things like that. Um, there's lots of excitement. There, the, the characters are um, murderers and there's, there's robberies. Uh, there's to talk of murder and suicide and there's cohort, coerced suicide. Um, things that feel very present. Um, there's a cholera outbreak and a factory has to be shut down because too many people have gotten sick and a riot breaks out and there's protests from the, from the factory workers. How are we going to, um, <clears throat> how are we going to be paid? How are we going to make our living? We, we, we can't work in the factory anymore. Um, it's really very present today. Um, the, the other thing that I'll say is that the book is also very funny, which the, the fact that it kind of sneaks up on you makes the funny parts really have a great payoff. These uh, intimidating t uh, characters that feel uh, like they can say nothing wrong and that everyone that they're around treats them with respect and if they don't get respect, there's real consequences. And those characters at one point meet the younger generation. It's a group of students. And they treat the, these older people indignantly and they're rude to them and openly hostile. One of the characters is related to the other one and says, how dare you speak to me with such familiarity? And the, the older character says, but I'm your uncle. I used to tote you around. And the, the nephew says, I don't care what you used to tote around in the past. And by the way, I never asked you to tote me around. And it just floors the, the uncle. Like, how do you interact with like, such a rude little kid? Uh, the, I'll tell you about the one of my favorite scenes and the, the funniest scene. It's something that feels like it's straight out of uh, Monty, P Monty Python. <clears throat> and it, so it's uh, these people that want to have a secret meeting and they, they all get together and then they're trying to figure out whether or not the thing that they're doing is actually a meeting. And I'll read some of the dialogue. <clears throat> Let's see. I suggest that those who wish it to be a meeting raise their right hand, Madame Virginsky suggested. Some raised their hand, others did not. There were some who raised it and then took it back, took it back and then raised it again. Pa the devil! I didn't, I didn't understand a thing, one officer shouted. I don't either, shouted another. No, I understand, a third one shouted. Hand up if yes. Yes? But what does yes mean? It means a meeting. No, not a meeting. I voted a meeting, the high school boy shouted, addressing Madame Virginsky. Then why didn't you raise your hand? I kept looking at you, and you didn't raise yours, so I didn't either. How stupid. It's because I made the suggestion. That's why I didn't raise mine. Gentlemen, I suggest we do it again the other way around. Whoever wants a meeting can sit and not raise his hand, and whoever doesn't, raise his hand. Whoever doesn't, the high school boy repeated. Are you doing this on purpose, or what? Madame Virginsky shouted wrathfully. No, excuse me, it is whoever wants, or whoever doesn't, 
because it needs to be defined more precisely. Whoever does not, does not? Very well. But what one should do is raise it or not raise it. If one does not want, uh, <clears throat> and the, the fact is that they, they're just, you can see how confused they are, and they can't figure out a way of just answering a very simple question. Is the thing that we're doing right now a meeting? Should we stand or sit? You sit and raise your hand, or you stand and don't raise your hand. Uh, when you vote yes, what does the yes mean? Does yes mean it is a meeting, or yes means that it's not a meeting? Very funny. And the, the book has very funny parts like that. Um, and yeah, I, I would say it's it's one of those dangerous books of ideas, and you can see ideas running out of control. Um, and it's great. It's a, it's a fantastic, it's very challenging, it's a difficult novel. But when you get involved in the conversations that they're having, it these are re, these aren't science fiction or fantasy conversations about how to, to take over a government or the effects of God or atheism or nihilism or having uh, anarchy and having riots. It feels uh, real. Th these are the kinds of conversations that can have real consequences in the real world today. And uh, it, it's revealing and insightful and um, rewarding. It's a great book, it's a great novel. Uh, so let me know if you've read it. This is uh, Demons by Dostoevsky. These are demons in your mind. Uh, or let me know if you like anything else by Dostoevsky or Russian writers in general or anything like that, please leave a comment and thank you for watching.